know, some of the most anxious times in elementary school were when we were going to pick teams to play a sport. And it really didn't matter what sport we were playing. It all depended on how many people could play at one time. And so when we were ready to play, uh, every kid would do the exact same thing. If we were playing basketball and only 10 people could play, the first thing you did was count how many people wanted to play. Because then you'd know if, if people were going to get left out or, or who can play and who cannot. And so you would count, and if there was more people than could actually play, the anxiety level would start to rise. And then the captains would start to pick teams one by one, and if you're not getting picked, the anxiety continues to rise. And inevitably, at the end, some people didn't get picked. And they were left out. And they were excluded. You know, no one likes to be left out. No one wants to be excluded. And in Ephesians chapter 3, Paul has just talked about the amazing grace that God offers us. And in chapter 1, he's talked about how this grace uh, it lives inside every believer and has incredible power for us. In chapter 2, he shared about this grace is a gift from God. It's nothing that we do or we earn, but it's a gift from generous God. And so he's already talked about grace and what it means. And in chapter 3, he's sharing with them who it's for. And Paul says, it's for everyone. It's for Jew and Gentile. It is for everyone. And nothing illustrates this fact that the gospel of grace is for everyone more than Jesus' own life. You know, and Jesus has a knack for going after those who had not been picked, going after those who had been excluded, those who had been rejected. And over and over again throughout his life, you see him going after the ones that have been left out. One day, Jesus and his disciples were traveling through the area of Samaria. And uh, usually, Jews wouldn't even travel through Samaria. The, the rabbis would go around Samaria because the Samaritans, they were thought to be unclean. And so Jews and Samaritans would, would not come into contact with one another. A normal Jew wouldn't want anything to do with a Samaritan, much less a rabbi. But that doesn't stop Jesus. In fact, Jesus sends his disciples away, but he stays. And he goes up to a well, and there's a Samaritan woman there. And he engages in conversation with her. Not only does he not stay away from her, he actually engages her. And he asks her for some water from the well. And her response is a normal reaction. She says, sir, I can't give you water because you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. Because everybody knew that Jews and Samaritans do not interact. But again, that doesn't stop Jesus. So he tells her, if you only knew who you're talking to, you would know that I can give you living water. That would, you would never thirst again. And so she, obviously, that sounds good to her, so she says, Sir, can you give me some of this water? And Jesus, already knowing something about her, says, Why don't you go and get your husband? To which she probably hung her head and said, I don't have a husband. And that's when Jesus says, I know. In fact, you've had five husbands. And so this woman who is been rejected all her life just because she's a Samaritan and, and also by these five husbands. You see, we normally look at this woman in a negative way because she's been with five husbands, but one of the things we need to understand about time period back then was only the husband could initiate divorce. So it's very likely that it's the husband who sent her away time and time again. So this woman who's experienced so much rejection in her life comes across this man, Jesus. And Jesus responds to her by saying, there's a time coming and has now come. And it's come because Jesus is there. And he says, where the true worshipers will worship God. You know, Jesus doesn't say these people or that people or this label or that label. Jesus says anyone who wants God can now have him. You see, the gospel of grace Jesus' gospel of grace is for everyone. And the fact is, it's needed by everyone. And the good news, the good news of the gospel is that it doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, it's for you. It is all inclusive. Pastor John Orberg shares a story about uh, cattle ranchers in Australia. And so these Australian uh, ranches are 
hundreds of square miles. And these ranchers need to figure out a way to keep their cattle on their own ranch because they don't want them going to, off their property, so on and so forth. So these cattle ranchers have two options. One, they can build a giant fence around their whole property, which would take a really long time. Or they can choose shop option two. They can build a well in the middle of their property. And because the cattle understand that there's now a place where there's water, where the, the life source is, they'll, they won't st stray too far away. They'll stay on the property. You know, people in, in our day and in Jesus' day, and really throughout all of history, people are into building fences. I mean, we love building fences. And sometimes we, we build fences to keep our stuff in. And sometimes we build fences to keep people out. And unfortunately, this bleeds into our, our faith. And unfortunately, a lot of times, we exclude people from the gospel of grace. And we need to decide, are we going to be people who build fences? Or are we going to be people who dig wells? You know, Jesus was definitely not a fence builder. In fact, he, he knocked down walls and fences any and every opportunity that he got. There's an old story about Peter and, and him being the gatekeeper in heaven. And, and Paul comes over to him one day and says, Peter, there's more people in heaven than you're letting through the gates. How could this be? So they think about it for a little while and, and they, they kind of go, go away. And after a couple days, Paul comes back and he goes, Peter, I figured out why there's so many more people in heaven than, than who you're letting through the gates. And Peter goes, well, how's this, how's this happening? And Paul says, at night, when we go to bed, Jesus comes out here and he helps people over the wall and to get to heaven. You see, over and over and over, we're confronted with the fact that Jesus says his gospel is for everyone. It is all inclusive. Pastor and author Brendan Manning says this about God's all inclusive grace. The gospel of grace is for everybody. It's for the rich and it's for the poor, for the educated and the uneducated, for the Jew and the Gentile, for the black and the white and the orange and the blue and everything else in between. It is all inclusive. So may we be well people. May we be a kind of people that knocks down fences and walls. May we be a kind of church that meets people at the well and offers them the living water of Jesus.